Coming up on Mustang News, there's a new policy for people running for ASI president, and all of them have already violated it. We'll explain. Plus, Cal Poly has a low number of sexual assaults compared to other California colleges, but that may not be a good thing. We investigate and tell you why. And imagine going to a game show live and then winning $3,000 in prizes. We'll hear from the winner about his experience. Broadcasting from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, you're watching Mustang News. Thanks for joining us this Thursday, March 6th. I'm Jenna Brown. And I'm Katie McDermott. Well, ASI presidential candidates are still subject to the active campaigning policy that has resulted in fines during the past few days. Recruitment and Development Chair Cale Reed met with Dean of Students Gene DaCosta on Wednesday morning. According to Reed, DaCosta said the Recruitment and Development Committee will continue to enforce the policy. Fined outside the campaign season might prohibit communication and expression of interest in running for campaigns might limit the, the press's inclination to talk to potential candidates. He is set to have their regularly scheduled meeting tomorrow morning. They will be talking about the campaigning policy. In the last three years, Cal Poly has three sexual assaults on record. Compared to UC schools, that number is low, and there may be a reason why. Brianna Whitney has been investigating this, and she joins us from the newsroom now. Brianna? Yeah, Jenna, according to the campus security report, the UC system has a sexual assault report rate 2.5 times higher than the CSU system does. But because the UCs and CSUs do not use the same procedures in reporting assaults, those numbers may be deceiving. The UC system has a standardized procedure of reporting sexual assaults, while the CSU system does not. Over the past three years, out of 32 California schools relative to the number of students at each school, Cal Poly came in at number 29 with three reported assaults, and UC San Francisco came in at number one with 27 reported assaults. The most assaults over the past three years was UCLA with 77. We spoke to SAFER coordinator Christina Caviani last week about sexual assault, and she says Cal Poly's numbers are low, which isn't necessarily positive. The more we have higher numbers, that doesn't mean we're doing something wrong. It means that we're creating an environment where people do want to come forward. So I'm always happy when there's actually really realistic numbers to what's happening. According to the White House, one in five women will be sexually assaulted at some point during their college career. And according to the Department of Justice, one in three sexual assaults, the perpetrator was intoxicated. Now Caviani says she doesn't feel students take enough advantage of the counseling services available at Cal Poly and urges anybody to come forward and seek help if they feel they've been sexually assaulted or know somebody who has been. Reporting live from the newsroom, Brianna Whitney, Mustang News. Thanks for that report, Brianna. SAFER is located in the University Union, room 217. According to University Police, Cal Poly has had a total of 63 alcohol and drug-related hospital calls made on campus last year. With the 2013 to 2014 school year coming to an end in June, there have been 58 calls, and 43 of, the, of those calls required a trip to the hospital. There were 37 calls fall quarter, and there have been 21 calls so far this quarter. 71% of these calls were made in or near residential halls. Community Standards Coordinator Via Hardy says students are very nervous and scared when they come to visit her and talk about their experiences. The emotion usually comes into play for people who are very surprised with their own um, actions and getting themselves into those types of situations. Hardy said when students come in to talk to her, emotions run high. Her best advice is to know your limits and have good friends that can help you out if you need it. Cal Poly is partnering with Discovery Life Sciences to do a flu study on campus. Anytime a student goes into the health center to see if they have the flu, they can choose to be part of the new test. A new instrument will determine if they have flu type A, B, or no flu at all. This study is the first step towards getting the instrument approved by the FDA. Co-founder of Discovery Sciences, Ann Dover, says the goal is to eventually have an instrument that can test for 13 different illnesses. To start somewhere. So we need to start with the flu, A and B, to start with, and then we'll move on to RSV, 
you know, adenovirus and some of the other, other respiratory illnesses. When you're looking for these biomarkers, you need to, you know, work one at a time. The, um, the study will continue through April. Students can go to the health center and get tested if they feel like they have flu symptoms. Well, from student to entrepreneur to planning commissioner, one Cal Poly grad is entering the race to fill a seat on the San Luis Obispo City Council. David Aguilar sits down with the candidate to see why he is joining the race. We need more housing at Cal Poly. This is an issue Eric Meyer says he wants to address if he is elected to the San Luis Obispo City Council. He opposes the proposed site for the new freshman dorm complex at the corner of Grand and Slack. They should be following the master plan and putting the housing where they've already scheduled to put the housing. Another issue Meyer hopes to address, if elected, is biking around San Luis Obispo and Cal Poly. One of the things I want to do is help connect you know, San Luis Obispo to Cal Poly with better bike access. If he is elected, he hopes his past experience will help him solve these issues. Meyer majored in art and design and graduated from Cal Poly in 1985. He has served on the San Luis Obispo City Planning Commission from 2008 to 2013. Meyer is a co-founder of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Cal Poly. He was born in San Luis Obispo and grew up in Morro Bay. And his experience... It's made me realize how important it is to have balance perspective. Being elected to serve on the city council may seem like a glamorous job, but in fact, council members receive a monthly stipend of a little over $1,000. And for Eric Meyer, the idea of serving on the council isn't about the money. That's when I started thinking about um, what, what things the city of San Luis Obispo needs. Well, it needs good representation. It needs someone to care about it. Although the election is not until November, Meyer urges students to go out and vote. Any given group can, can shift an election. And if Cal Poly decided to vote, they would absolutely shift the election. They could get whatever they wanted. In San Luis Obispo, David Aguilar, Mustang News. Meyer is running to fill the seat of Councilwoman Kathy Smith, who has said she is not running for re-election. After the break, we'll show you how a major operation on campus is turning waste into profitable materials. And 30 Al Lambda Alpha Chi... Sorry, 30 Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity brothers made the trip down to L.A. to be on The Price is Right. One came home with thousands of dollars in prizes, and we'll talk to him coming up. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Headed out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. Well, for the typical broke college student, $3,000 goes a long way. And one Cal Poly senior won just that on a popular game show. You're the first person to go on the price is right. 
Colin Roth, a member of the fraternity Lambda Chi Alpha, was on The Price is Right with, the fr with fraternity brothers, and he scored big. He can't say what prizes he won until the episode airs, but the total was close to $3,000. This is the second time Lambda Chi brothers have gone to the show, and Roth says it's an unforgettable experience. They have these big cue cards that they, you know, with your name on them, and they pull a cue card, and I'm like, oh, that's my name! Like, oh, that's my name! You get there with like 27 of your best friends and everyone is just like going nuts for you on stage. That's, that's something I'll probably never forget. It was just unreal. Fun. You can watch Roth win big on April 23rd. Well, the month of March is known as Herstory Month. Each year, different events and speakers are brought together to help highlight women's issues. This year, Herstory kicked off early on February 7th. With one of the more popular events, the Magina Monologues. During Herstory Month, the Gender Equity Center collaborates with different departments to celebrate women's experiences, history, and empowerment. Um, and so we just decided to put, do a lot of our regular programs with that twist and then do like a series to emphasize a lot of the um, issues that affect women in the past, present, and probably future, too. Though Herstory Month's events are over, the Gender Equity Center always has events highlighting different racial, social, and gender issues. For more information on which events are being offered by the Multicultural Center each month, visit studentlife.calpoly.edu and search for the Gender Equity Center. More than 100 students and Cal Poly staff walked away from Kennedy Library with a free piece of cake on Monday. The cake was given away in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday, which was on Sunday, and disappeared in less than half an hour. It was part of an initiative started by the National Education Association to promote reading among communities. Yeah. Dana Ospina said that the event wasn't aimed only at Cal Poly students. So we had an event earlier today at 9.30 where the children from the Learning Lab came over and we did story time and crafts with them. But we also want to celebrate with the community because reading is obviously for everyone and as a library we're very happy to promote reading. If you missed out on getting a free piece of cake this year, you can catch a piece of the library's annual event next year. Engineers Without Borders and the Cal Poly Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship are coming together for a $10,000 idea. The National Collegiate Inventors and Innovators Alliance, or NCIIA, awarded Cal Poly with a $10,000 Sustainable Vision Grant. Dr. Sama Irvin, a professional in the Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering Department and advisor to Engineers Without Borders, wrote the winning proposal. Dr. Irvin wants to combine engineering and business talent to create new products that improve the lives of those in need around the world. Also cover topics of design, how to design for people living in um, extreme conditions, for instance. So we have uh, a vision where uh, this would take us to humanitarian engineering program. Dr. Irvin also wants to use the grant money to plan new courses that focus on humanitarian engineering. Now Cal Poly has one of the largest university compost facilities in the nation. We visited the site to see how they are turning waste into useful and profitable products. This may look like any road, but follow this dirt path up the hill and you'll find the site of a major compost operation. So composting is a managed process that is taking any type of organic material, anything that was once living, and turning it into a, a valuable soil amendment, which is compost. Animal manure from horses and cattle on campus is brought to this site on Mount Bishop Road. Here it is mixed with green waste and stored in long rows. Within three to four months, the plant and animal waste becomes nutrient-rich soil, which is then bagged and sold at places like the Poly Plant Shop. Well, composting is really important because a lot of our food waste goes to landfills and that's not very sustainable. It uses a lot of gas and it just fills up the landfill with unnecessary items. In addition to the compost project, the Center for Sustainability is hosting a five-day compost training at the end of the month geared toward those in agriculture and waste industries. And this is an A to Z, everything you ever want to know about large-scale composting that we'll be looking at um, 
things starting from the biology to the management of the piles. The compost project also offers tips for starting and maintaining your own compost on its website. You know, it can be done. It's so simple and easy and anyone can do it. You just have to have some worms, you put some food, and you have your own compost and it's great. A plan is in the works to build a similar compost facility off of Orcutt Road. While those who live nearby are concerned about the smell, Hunter Francis says if the operation is managed correctly, this shouldn't be a problem. And coming up, we'll take a look at our weekend weather. And we're also going to have Dylan Payne here in the studio for sports. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. You could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Well, we had a lot of rain this past weekend. But we did. We really needed it, though. Um, and so it's actually been really nice this week. It was kind of cloudy earlier, and I actually heard that it's going into, like, the high 70s this weekend. Yeah, it seems so. like it's going to be really nice. So we have Lisa Diaz in studio to give us our weekend weather. Lisa? Thank you. I'm here to talk about, first, I know it's going to be a warm weekend ahead, but first let's take a look at some of the damage that we suffered last weekend when we had one of the worst storms in years here on the Central Coast. So let's take a look at Gaviota Pier. We have video footage from that. And Avila Pier. Oh, I'm sorry. We're actually going to start with today's headlines. So like I said, it's a warm weekend ahead. Offshore winds will start tomorrow. It'll be clear Friday and Saturday, so don't worry, those winds will go away. And then the clouds will return on Sunday. So if you wanna do any outdoor activities, Saturday is gonna be the day for you. All right, now let's take a look at our weather map here. Starting up north where it is high, or it's gonna be warmer up in North County, 71 up in Paso Robles, still very moderate temperature, moving down to the Tascadero where it's gonna be at 70, so still maintaining kind of the more heat in the North County. And then we head out to the coast, Los Osos is gonna be 58 degrees, Avila Beach is gonna be 66, so it's gonna get a little cooler. You know, there's always fog out in the Los Osos area. Then down to San Luis Obispo, here, where we are here in Studio 300, very moderate, 68. Now let's take a look down at South County, 64 in Santa Maria, so it'll get cool as you travel down the coast. That's it for your weekend weather. Thank you so much, and back to you, Katie and Jenna. Oh, sorry. Well, thanks, Lisa. That actually sounds really nice. And so now we actually have Dylan Payne here in the studio with us for sports. So Dylan, what do we have going on this week? Well, we actually have a lot going on in sports this week. Cal Basketball took the first game of the two-season series, 72-64, to against blue-green rival UCSB earlier this year. Saturday, Cal Poly seniors Eversley, Johnson, and Odisser play on the Mott Gym floor for the last time in their Cal Poly careers. Sports reporter Denzel Quarterman spoke to Johnson and assistant coach Sam Kirby to see how they plan to stop UCSB's big man, Alan Williams. He's six foot eight, 280 pounds, and averaging a double-double for the down south rival Gauchos. He's built to score, and he will. So the question is, how to stop him? 
Uh, you can't stop or slow down Allen Williams. I mean, <laughs> he's going to get his points. He's going to get his rebounds. He's a very good player. I don't, um, as far as, you know, playing Santa Barbara, you just have to limit their shooters. They have really good shooters um, and very good contributing players. Um, by doing that, I think that that's the key in how you beat Santa Barbara. Yeah, he had a, uh, a real good game against us uh, last time we played him. And we kind of we kind of just singled, singled him up where, you know, we we're going to let him score 25, 30 points, but didn't want anybody else to score, you know, just amount, just as much. Saturday, Cal Poly will finish out their regular season in Mott Gym with the chance to move up as high as fifth place in the Big West Conference. It seems the Mustangs need to get back to the basics and make sure they can play sound defense and rebound the ball come Saturday night's game. Uh, as long as we keep getting better, um, I think last game we showed the conference that we're capable of playing with anyone at any time. Um, playing a tough team like Irvine, I think we showed them definitely that we earned their respect, um, especially from the loss they put on us. Uh, being more consistent. Um, you know, carrying momentum into the next game is probably the most important thing we have to do. Reporting from the Cal Poly campus, Denzel Quarterman, Mustang News. Saturday's game starts at 7 p.m. and will be streaming live through GoPoly.com. Suspensions are lifted for several softball players, and the team is back in full swing. The Cal Poly Director of Athletic Communications wrote in an email to Mustang News that the remaining four freshman players are off suspension. Originally, six freshmen on the team were suspended in the beginning of February. According to softball coach Jenny Condon, the women violated team rules. The players were not allowed to participate in the season opening Kajikawa Classic at Arizona State. Currently, all six women are eligible to play in the upcoming Mustang Classic at home this weekend. Speaking of the Mustang Classic, Teams from all across the country are headed to San Luis Obispo for the week this weekend for the 8th annual tournament. Stony Brook and Farley Dickinson are heading to Bob Jansen Field from the East Coast and Sacramento State and Santa Clara are driving south to play here at Cal Poly. The Mustangs will play three days of doubleheaders, coming off a 12-day break. The tournament starts on Friday and ends with Youth Day on Sunday. Cal Poly goes into the Mustang Classic 7-9 on the season and has a combined record of 20-13 and 13 in the past seven Mustang Classics. Really our first time for the team to play at home and for the, the community to see us play. Um, and for the freshmen to play at home too. So it's exciting for everybody. The tournament's first pitch will be thrown Friday at 9 a.m. starting the game between Santa Clara and Sacramento State. The first game for the Mustangs is at 2 p.m. Cal Poly's men swimming and diving head into the Pac-12 championship this week, led by 28th ranked Sony Fierro. The Pac-12 champion conference championships began Wednesday and will go through Saturday and will be held at Weyerhaeuser King County Aquatic Center in Federal Way, Washington. Sophomore swimmer Sonny Fiera comes into the finals number five in the Pac-12 in the 1,650-yard freestyle, having finished in 15 minutes, 6.23 .23 of a second at the Winter, AT&T Winter National Championships. For coverage of the Pac-12 finals, visit mustangnews.net. You can take part in a giant version of a classic playground game tonight. The game is knockout, and it will be one to remember. ASI is attempting to break the Guinness World Record for the largest game of knockout. The current record is 781 participants. More than 1,500 people were invited through Facebook to come be a part of history for the, for the massive game. The event is free... Oh. A community event, the Cal Poly community kind of bringing them together, doesn't matter what you know, your background is, what you're studying, where you're coming from. Uh, we just want this to be something where everyone could be a part of it for free. The event is free to join. All you have to do is show up to the rec center tonight before 6 to register. Members of the Guinness Book of World Records will not be at the event because they are asking a couple thousand dollars to fly someone out, so instead there will be members of Slow City Council to witness the event and film it so the tape can be reviewed in London by the World Record Committee. 
The top eight winners will get swag bags and will compete in another knockout tournament on Saturday during the halftime show at the men's basketball game. And that's all we have for uh, sports this week. That, I know yeah. it's a lot. That knockout thank you. game sounds fun. I wonder if we'll actually I break know. the record. I, I know. They were asking I might have to go. Thousands of dollars for us to that's, fly them it's out. It's a little ridiculous, <laughs> but you know what? We don't have that much money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all we have for sports. So coming up next, we're going to have Eden Alessage in the studio. We're going to take you inside last weekend's craft beer festival. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Uh, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Start a new check. What did I do? Okay. Wow. That is so weird. Hey! Hi! Hi! Oh my gosh. Hi! Hi. God, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so nervous. Gia, you're so big. Come closer to the camera. <laughs> Wait, now you're in my face. Hi. That was so good. And we're out. You got plans? You bet. Fifty million Americans struggle with hunger, but we can do something about it. Excuse me. What's going on? Dinner. Please join me in helping put food on their tables. Together, we can feed America. You guys keep going. I'm going to get the plates. Plates? Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger. Well, welcome back, everybody. We have the lovely Eden Alessage here in the studio for Pollywood. Eden, what can you tell us about this week? All right, thank you, guys. We're going to get right into this week's Pollywood Minute. Last night, legendary voice actor and the original Batman, Adam West, showed his documentary as a kickoff to SLO's International Film Festival. The fourth annual film festival will run until Sunday and will show more than 60 films. Jeff Bridges will be back in SLO to accept the King Vitor Award on Saturday night at the Fremont Theater. For ticket information and participating restaurants, you can check out slowfilfest.org. Beer lovers of the Central Coast gathered this past weekend for the annual Slow Craft Beer Festival. Mustang News beer columnist Nick Larson and Jake DiVincenzi take us inside Craft Beer Fest. Craft Beer Coalition's annual Slow Craft Beer Festival was like an afternoon in beer heaven. At the sold out event, we had the opportunity to drink with and talk to many beer enthusiasts. I think it's just super important socially that guys understand that beer has a value, it's a nature of life, and that we taste it and we don't drink it to get drunk, but we drink it to taste. We tasted more than 50 different craft beers from all across the country. They even had apple juice. We were asked to help out pouring for Green Flash Brewing Company in San Diego, got to check out some unique local businesses, and were invited to sit in on a special rare beer tasting. And we're at the last tasting of the vertical set of Sukaba from Firestone. So basically the point of this is that you taste each year from 2011-2014, so the last, what, three years, and you basically compare how this beer ages over time. Mmm, beer. What do you like about craft beer that's much better than Coors Light or Bud Light or whatever you can get in the stores? Uh, I think craft brewers are willing to take risks. They take non-standard flavors. Um, like I had a habanero IPA today, which, you know, is something that you don't find, you know, in a can of Coors. Yeah. Jake DeVincenzi. Nick Larson. Mustang, Mustang News. You can read more about Slow's Craft Beer Fest in Nick and Jake's column on mustangnews.net. Wake up, wake up. No, it's not the first of the month, but Bone Thugs and Harmony are in San Luis Obispo and taking over the stage at Slow Brew this weekend. We're not against rappers, but we are against those thugs. thugs. Reached their height of their stardom in the late 1990s and early 2000s. 
Their famous hits include Grammy-winning Thuggish Ruggish Bone, First of the Month, and The Crossroads. Doors open Friday at Slow Brew. Thanks for watching our show. Back to the ladies at the desk. Thank you. That's, that's all the time we have. Thanks for watching.